Welcome back to Finding Happiness and Wellness Through Making Art. I'm Pastelis Avon Waters, and this week I want to get you ready to start painting your first pastel. We're going to get you right to the edge, and you can even start after this is over. But I want to get you started and get you in the right direction and get you started right. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe and be sure to hit the like button and the notification button so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. This week, let's get started with some final preparations. Selecting something to paint. Now that sounds easy. I know, I know. So many of you have a favorite photo that you want to turn into a painting or have always wanted to try to paint. That's fine. I can't really stop you. I can't reach out there and stop you from trying that. But I hope after you get that out of your system, then that you'll come back, you'll listen to this, and you'll listen to me and take my advice. What the right image to start painting really is. It's not what you think it would be. I urge, I urge, I urge, I urge you to consider copying another painting first rather than your favorite photograph. Why copy? There's so, so, so many reasons why an artist should copy. There's so much already done for you. The artist who painted that picture already did a lot of stuff that as a beginner, you would just, you might get the color right. You might get the composition right of your own painting or your own photograph. But you'll struggle with all these other things that a, an artist has already done for you. I want you in your first painting to focus on blocking in large areas of color and selecting a palette that is either matches the painting or something of your own creation. We talked about color harmonies and things in the previous video on color wheels. So you may want to try one of those uh, ideas. But if not, I urge you to take the copy and copy the colors that the artist has already selected. The goal here is to get you used to figuring out how to mix your colors, getting them on the paper. There's different ways to do that. So copying another artist's work, there's nothing wrong with it, as long as you're not out there trying to sell it. As a matter of fact, most great artists that you know are household names, Picasso, Matisse, uh, Renoir, they spend a lot of time in museums copying and drawing other artists' works. We all copy in order to learn our craft. And there's no difference. As a beginner, you need to be able to do that too. As I said, by starting with another artist's work, there's a lot less for you to worry about. So, in fact, if you want to copy the colors, uh, that's done for you by the other artist. The composition is done for you by the other artist. The other artist has already experimented with different ways to construct the painting and design it. The format, by format I mean is it square, is it long and rectangle, vertical and rectangle, is it squatty and scrunchy square? So all that has already been decided for you. All you have to do is match that format. The editing out of unnecessary things in the image has also been done for you. So every professional artist of many, many years, like I said, has uh, copied. And over the years, through copying other people's work, they've developed an understanding of how the materials work. They've also developed their own style. So the ism, or um, the style of painting, has already been decided for you also when you copy another person's work. By isms, I mean like Impressionism. A lot of people like Impressionism. A lot of people like the bright colors of the post-Impressionist and the style of the post-Impressionist. Modernism, uh, realism, photorealism, all these isms are already worked out in that photograph. I keep around a lot of old magazines. This is a fairly new plain air magazine. Uh, it has a lot of Impressionism in it. So we'll be picking out something out of this magazine to illustrate how you make that selection. You'd be surprised what I want you to do because I want you to keep it simple. 
when you make the selection. You don't have to necessarily like the painting you pick out. You just need to select something where you are simplifying enough elements that you'll have success mixing colors and trying to match those colors that the other artist used or your own palette from the color wheel. What I want you to look for is keeping it simple with the fewest details. For example, a painting like this has a lot of things going on in it. There's tons and tons of detail in the grass and the branches and the bark and things like that. That is a more realistic something like this with a lot of lines and a lot of details in the ship. Those sort of things try to avoid as you're picking out your first painting. This one by um, Jill Stefani Wagner. I believe she's, unless she moved, she's a Michigan artist. This is a good example of something to look for. You've got large areas of color and you've got large shapes that will make it simple to get this onto your canvas or paper. So look for something with large shapes. Here's another one by by Vlad Duchev. I may have pronounced his name wrong. But look at those big broad areas and shapes. This one's more square or a fat rectangle. But look at these simple shapes. That's what you want to look for in your first painting because again, we want you to mix colors, we want you to learn to apply these things to the paper first before you go into all those details and things of a boat or your favorite photograph. By all means, again, I can't stop you from doing your photograph, so go out there, paint your favorite photograph, and then come back and let's try something simple. I think for my demo, I'm going to use uh, Jill Stefani Wagner's piece nice big shapes, it's got some water which may be challenging for you, but um, we're just going to we're just going to block this in. I'm going to show you today how to block this in and get ready to paint. And then if you want to paint this or some other picture that you select later on, then by all means do it and then next week I'll show you how to block these colors in and make it work for you. But right now we're going to transfer this whatever you select we're going to transfer to the paper in order to paint. There's many different ways to transfer an image. That is a separate video in itself because there are so many different ways. But today I'm just going to use a piece of charcoal. You could use a pencil. You could even use the end of one of the pastels in your box or something in order to kind of draw out certain elements of this. But I'm going to use a pencil, uh, charcoal and we're going to just get in the big shapes that Gwen, or Gwen, yeah, Jill has in this. Let's see if I can get that over there where you can see it. And I'm going to be an acrobat. This is the one we're doing right here. All right. She's got this right in here. Do the best you can, because if you are not used to drawing, you just want some general shapes. You'll drive yourself crazy if you try to expect to get something that is exactly like what is in the magazine or the, the other artists that you've selected. You'll drive yourself crazy. And the whole idea of painting and, and doing art is to have some fun. So don't let this stress you out. We've got some trees in the background. You just want to put some shapes on there because again, anybody, anybody, what's the purpose of this? The purpose of this today is just to get you learning to fill in big shapes with colors. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do that. Now you see we've got some reflections down in here from those trees. So those reflections come across in one shape. This looks like one giant shape, but there's several shapes. There's a wedge of greens in here and a little reflection and some blue greens or aquas and the uh, pinkish violets down in here. So we're going to get some of that in there. So you just want to get the shapes in there 
and then uh, you are going to pick out your color scheme. So, as I said, you can go back to the color wheel and come up with your own, but the easiest way if you've never painted or mixed colors is to use the color scheme that the artist used. We are going to pick out some of these same colors out of the pastel box that Jill has used. And you can see I've got some of those. You can see the uh, the mauves and the pinkish and when I put some of this pink over some of those blues and blue greens it'll mix this color here. When I mix the green with the yellows I'll get some of these bright colors that are in here. And we don't have a sky that is we don't have a pastel for that color of light green sky, but by using this over some uh, yellow, then we can lighten up that sky and the trees in the background. So remember your mixing, or go back and review that video. So go back and review the video if you uh, want to remember how to mix or figure that out. Feel free to start on this. And next week, I'll show you how to block in these areas that we drew and how to start re uh, mixing some of these colors. We'll start mixing some of these colors to show you, again, uh, what was in that earlier video and apply it towards an actual painting. So, um, if you have just a limited set of, of colors in your pastel set, you don't need to pull them out like this. I have hundreds. And so if you have a larger pastel set, it's sometimes easier to pull them out and set the ones aside in a lid of a box or in a tray. Cooking pans work great for this too. So you can set them aside and that way you, don't, you know what colors you're using. Now, a word of caution, if you paint without me before our next video, don't think that you've, because you've picked these out, these are the only colors you can use. This is a starting point. Worry about getting the big colors in, and then if you need to add other colors to it that are similar in value and color family, then that's perfectly okay. But this is a method to start selecting the colors that you want to use and trying to match that copy process that I recommend so much for beginners. And even if you are not a beginner, continue to copy other people's work now and then in order to explore how they created something. A lot of times copying will open up new avenues and ideas for your own painting, even if you've been painting a while. I want you to enjoy painting, I want you to enjoy art, and use it as a way to be happy in life. We all deserve some happiness, and art is the way that I found it, and I think you can find it too. So until next time, happy painting, and we'll see you with another exciting episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Bye.